Hey everybody, Ronaldo Waffman here with my DMX video manuals. Now first off, my wife said that if I said the word sticky buns, this video would get more likes than any other one of my videos. So go ahead and settle a bet. I'm going to say the word, ready? Sticky buns. Alright, now that we're done with that tomfoolery, today's video is going to talk about loading a fixture into your DMX or my DMX library. So the very first thing is, of course, I'm going to open up a new show, which I already have that. And I have two different ways of accessing a fixture. I can either go here, so I'm going to scroll down to American DJ, ADJ, and let's say I have an Inno Spot Pro. I'm going to look here for the Inno Spot Pro. Ah, there it is right there. And it says DMX Universe. Now it says Universe 1 because my DMX only supports one universe. It's made to be a very simple program. So we already got my DMX or well, Universe 1. The first, now next option is which DMX channel, which is going to be the first one in the series. Well, I have no lights right now, so I'm just going to tell it that I want to start a DMX channel 1. And I have four InnoSpot Pros. It's automatically going to map this for me. And we're going to go ahead and patch. Bam! Instantly done. Now you'll see that the four InnoSpots have been color categorized. Now at this point, I can go ahead and have them all the same color. So for example, let's say that the first two inno spots are going to be on stage right, and then the other two inno spots are going to be stage left. So I'm going to go ahead and color code that. But I can also rename it too. So I can tell it inno pro stage left. So again, we'll say that you know the green will be stage left. Alright, and I don't have to do the numbers. It automatically does, oops, uh, excuse me, I do have to redo the number, sorry. There we go. Alright, so there is Inno Pro, stage left too. Now we're going to go Inno Pro, stage right. And we're going to do the Inno Pro, stage right. And we have our second light. Now this is going to allow much easier categorizing. But I'm going to show you an even easier way to be able to number your fixtures for categorization purposes. So again, I did the NO stage left and then stage left too, but there's a much easier way. I'm going to go ahead and grab both of these right here, and I'm going to just go ahead and rename it. I'm just going to do NO stage right, all right, and there it is right there. It'll automatically change the number, one and two. So if you change each one individually, it changes that to dot one. If you bulk name them, it automatically renames it for you. Or I can go for any reason if I wanted to name, rename just one, I can go into NOSL. Now, at the same time, if I add another NO, I'm going to go right here. Okay. You'll see that it's automatically patched at number five. But if I wanted to rename it something different, I'm going to go ahead and delete that because I know that maybe I want it to be one and two because it's going to be a different name. I'm just going to bring it back to one, the index number one, and I'm going to patch it. All right, and there's two of them right there, so I'm just going to right click and we're going to call them Inno Center. Okay, so there it is right there. Just a quick, easy way that I wanted to add in to show you how you can rename everything. Let's continue the tutorial. Going back over here, we've got our Inno Spot Pros loaded. And another easier way of doing this is if you, you want to just search. So for example, I have some Mega Tripar profiles that I'm going to use for my floods. So I'm just going to type Mega Tripar profile. There it is right there. And I can select which channel mode. Now in this case, I see mode 7. And mode 7 doesn't necessarily mean channel mode 7. And I can see that right there. So I want to say it's mode 1 that it's like, okay, so we have one channel mode there. We've got two, we've got three, we've got four, we've got five, we've got six, and there is seven channel mode right there. Now with some fixtures, as I said, it's not necessarily that. So make sure you compare or count the number of channels. So there's the Mega Tripod Profile, and I can individually drag it if I, want, if I choose to. If I decide that I needed to patch some more, I can patch each one at a time, whatever the case may be. I can go ahead and select all of them here. I'm going to grab my colors. I want to make them all red. And there it is. Easy, ready to go. We're good. I can also, again, right click, 
We can duplicate if we want to. I can go ahead and bulk rename them. So I'm just going to call it Mega Tripar. And then when I do that and I do the bulk name, I don't have to individually number them. So see how these I had to do each one because it's it said 0.1. It's because I individually named them. When I grab them in bulk, it'll do them all at once. You can also right click again. You can delete. You can copy, paste them, duplicate them. A couple different options there. The options are also available here as well. Now we've got a couple of other things over here. We can also do our list view. Now the list view opens up a little bit more for us to look at here. All right. So basically, the very first thing here, of course, is our letter shortcut. So I can select the lights using letters there. This leads to, or this tells me the profile address that it's on. You'll see that it's SSL2. If you've watched my CompuShow tutorials, then you know, notice that I'll talk about the SSL2. So these are the same profiles that CompuShow uses. So you can use the profiles no matter which Facebook group you get it from. All right. Uh, these are basically different uh, fade options, and we're going to talk about that later on in a different video. Uh, we can invert pan, invert tilt, and we can also swap pan and tilt. If you do not have a digital fixture and you use dip switches, they're right there. So right then and there, it is easy to automatically, or it's easy and automatically tells you what your address will be via dip switches. So again, that is how you patch lights into my DMX. Now, if you need to change them for any reason, you can just go, excuse me, you can just go down and move them over here. All right, we're good to go. Or let's say that you're OCD like me, like, you know, all the floods have to go first. So we're just going to go here. And even if you've made scenes, you do not lose your programs at all. I know some other softwares, you lose all your programs. If you even try doing this, this is not an issue here. So it automatically repatch all of your shows. You just have to change the addresses on your lights, of course. So there you go. Easy way to patch with my DMX 2.0. Thank you guys for watching this video. Again, make sure to click like, subscribe, share with your friends, and leave a comment or any questions down below. Thank you guys so much for watching, and God bless. And my wife keeps saying the word sticky buns. I married a normal one.